Yes. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting episode, Tales of Heroes video replay review here. And uh, this is going to be a great one because it's our first match on Wrecked Train. That's right, Wrecked Train is one of the new community maps that got released with uh, the last patch 1.6. So we're going to see how it plays out here. This is actually a very... Very cool map, very Angaville-esque, because there's a lot of strat points that are right next to the base that you can use to cut off the opponent from much of the map. For example, you can see down here, you've got a strat point here and here, which cut them off from the majority of the base, the majority of the map. You can take this guy's strat point here and here and cut him off, or sorry, here and here. Take these two points, he's cut off from the middle, and much of the map, if you've got this side, it's, it's a very interesting map. Some more strat points over here that cut off the entire left or right side. You've got the left side has a plus five fuel point, right side has a plus ten fuel point that are completely dependent upon owning the strat points in the middle of the map. Which makes it very interesting, very dynamic. We'll find out how it plays out here in just a moment. Let me introduce myself. I am Bridger, host of Tales of Heroes. And with me, as always, is Vittensby. Welcome to the program. This is going to be an interesting one, guys, I think. Uh, I'm really excited to see how Wreck Train plays. Uh, I've never played it myself. Um, so, yeah, I guess Bridger's pro commentary will be the guiding force of this one. <laughs> and I can, give my, uh, I can give my opinion on the tactics, I guess. But as far as overall strategy, uh, I think that uh, he's the one to go to on this Well, one. I've only ever played it once, and that was back when it was still one of the uh, contest maps. I don't think it's really changed since then. But... Uh, if I recall, there were some very interesting things revolving the left side of the map being more access friendly because you have a couple of a bunch of garrisonable buildings over there, especially this one right here, which I was just looking at next to the plus five fuel on the left, the northern plus five fuel. If you get a machine gun in the building next to that plus five fuel, just south of it, um, that will pretty much help you guard that plus five, the plus five on the left, and the plus five uh, south of that. So that gives you pretty uh, able way to defend. Also, I think it would defend the strat point. It looks like it would reach out there with an MG42. I'm not quite sure. But that would be sort of a key building with the axis being on the south as it is in this situation on the left-hand side. And the, uh, the, the right-hand side is much more open. You don't see really many buildings over here on the right-hand side of... Uh, uh, more allied-friendly, I think, on the right-hand side. And in the middle, it's just, you know, wrecked trains everywhere. <laughs> you might are in there too, so maybe the glider crashed into the train, I don't know. But uh, it's got a lot of cover, heavy cover, all over the place over here. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. Actually, some negative cover in uh, on, on the roads here in the middle as well, so that's going to pop up probably and, and hurt some people when they're running through it. So uh, I guess without further ado, let's get her started, hey? Yep, and I already heard the skipping thing, but if it does it one more time, I'm not going to be very happy. So um... There's no skipping. You are imagining things. No, I'm not imagining things. Well, there's nothing <laughs> on our side, so it's all clean recorded so far. Uh, Gabe Dog SGL is going to be on the Axis side. Japan 001 on the Allied side. This is one of our submitted user replay reviews, and uh, I just jumped on it because I want to see how Wreck Train plays out. So let's hope this is a good game, and uh, don't castrate us if it's not. Here we go. Five seconds on the clock. Five, four, three. Do I just sound like the guy from Double Dare? What's that guy's name? Five, ten seconds on <laughs> the clock. Summers. Let's see if it, Mark Summers. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Five seconds on the clock. Let's see if we can make it happen. Four, three, two, one, and there we go. Starting at the very beginning with a Wehrmacht quarters and a barracks. Barracks. Yes, barracks. We got a barracks. As you might. I expect. would definitely think that this is a map that favors barracks. Yeah. Um, a lot of points to cap. My yeah. God. There's a lot of points. Yeah, this is looks like even the size of you know a two v two map. Really, it is pretty but, big. Uh, yeah, it's I, it's one of the prettier maps, that's for sure. Yeah, a lot of a lot of different things. I think it's I think it's about the size of Simois, but because it, it doesn't have the same choke points and the big swashes of you know forest and hedgerow and 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 river running through it, it doesn't look as like I think Simois is a pretty big map, or maybe I'm thinking of something else. But uh, we'll see how it plays out. We've got a double engineer start. I think, and a double pioneer start for both sides. So yeah, what are they going for first? Both going for the left side. Actually, no, one of them is uh, going for the for the right there with the plus five next to their base. So, interesting. I, I'd ex Ooh, we got a bike 
out first for the Axis. That's an interesting start. That's certainly, bike I think, spam. a good start. That's, That's a pretty good start because see. because the map is so big, the bike is going to allow you to really harass pretty well. One of the one of the interesting strategies that I've been trying out, especially on Simwa, is I go bike first and I send my my first pioneer way up, and then my bike will harass their engineers that are capping the plus ten, you know, way back on their side of the river. And then after it takes a bunch of damage, it just retreats right next to the Pioneer, which is already way up there, and repairs, and then goes after it again. But because of the heavy cover that's available in the middle, that bike's certainly not going to win an engagement, even against engineers at, at medium range. So it has to back up there to go into long range. Because this is one of the weaknesses of the construction units. They, they can't fire at long range. Most of the other units can fire at long range. But uh, the bike is able to pick them off, just like this. He's hoping to probably cap that and then hit the retreat button. Players a little sluggish with his first rifleman squad. Kind of uh, sat at it back for some reason. Not entirely sure why, but uh, he's pushing up the center now, and uh, he's going to force that pioneer uh, more more than likely to retreat or at least uh, pull back. They're losing territory. And it looks like there's the first uh, sort of decap of that strat point, which you're probably going to see a lot of. It controls the plus five fuel that's over here, so now that is unconnected to the Axis player's base. And we're seeing the first caps of the two victory points. The Allies are taking the center. The Axis are taking the left. They're going to gain a quick point right off the bat at 499 now on the Allied side. Now we've got a machine gun moving up. So we've got a bike and then a machine gun. So if he plays this smart, he's going to be able to use the bike to get the range on the... Uh, on, on the rifleman and then uh, put the machine gun in such a place that he can pin them, but it doesn't look like that's, that's what he's doing right now. He's using the machine gun to cover his pioneers there. And here's the bike at it again, trying to uh, do some harassment of these uh, engineers. Do you think he could have used the bike better? Because right now he only managed to chase one squad off with it so far. I think he could have used the bike better if he got two of them. I'm not sure why. I'm, this is a really wide open map, so maybe getting two of them would have been a, a much better choice for that double quick, you know, yeah. pack, um, harassment power. It seems like you have a lot of time on this map. You're not really, there's no real threat to being, you know, basically completely stuck in your base from what I can see. Yeah, at this point, uh, I think he was a little bit too slow realizing the riflemen were getting chewed up by Volks at long range. Or he might have just been staying there long enough to pull in the other rifle squad because now it's going to be, you know, that Volk squad's in big trouble. Even even at a half strength, extra squad is going to help it out enough. There we go. He lost one, close to losing another one of the Volk squad, and then they're in big trouble. He's trying to bait them into the machine gun here. Always a common tactic with the Axis side. That'll force the rifles to retreat. There it is. It's going to suppress them both. Now he can move the, the Volks in. There's the retreat. Oh, I think that was a little early. I'm pretty sure he could have afforded to try and crawl out of the machine gun fire. Do you think, Vittensby? We are losing territory. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe he has been lost. I'm here. There you are. Just uh, <laughs> distracted. Okay. So we've got another machine gun. And it's going to be moving up probably into this building. And that's going to be able to cover a lot. Yep, he's going for that. And now he's going to be able to shoot those riflemen, I think. Is it far enough? No. Nope. Yes, there it is. He's going to be able to uh, cover that fuel point. And we've got a decap of the middle VP. Nope, he changed his mind apparently. But we are losing ticks now on the, al on the Axis side. They're at 498 because they lost that left side. There's another force retreat of the rifleman. And that's going to allow him to move his machine gun up if he brings something over there to scout for it. That's one of the most important things that I learned when I'm playing is once you've forced an enemy back with a machine gun, if you force them to retreat, never just charge a machine gun up to put it in a better position. Don't, like, just send it into this building because you might just be running into the next rifle squad that's coming out or the rifle squad that's coming back. So I always try and screen my machine gun with... Even with, even if it's just with pioneers, send the pioneers out like a half screen length ahead of the machine gun, so that they can sort of make sure that there's nothing waiting to intercept that machine gun and just you know flank around behind it and kill it. I think his bike usage has actually been really good, um, well except for right now. Wow! Lose it. Oh but, man! Uh, 
Yeah, that was one of the common complaints that uh, I think people had when they played this map before, was that uh, where that engineer wired off in the bottom, it was, you know, pretty much good game to have access to the right side um, of the map. And it Similar was, on the top, though. Not not quite as easy as, as that, but now that wire cutters are free, I don't really think that's too much of an issue. It's interesting that <clears throat> MGs have... I heard that... Um, this was kind of an allied favored map because you know the center is pretty wide open. There's really not a particular building or something there that you can put your machine gun in. I could see bunkers I, being very useful there. Yeah, he's doing kind of an interesting. Uh, he's doing a good job with his machine guns. I'm not sure why he got uh, BARs first. I guess that's just to stop um, any kind of capping power. Um, and plus, uh, a couple squads of barred riflemen if you focus fire on on machine guns even if they're suppressed can still take it out so it might not be a, a bad choice considering you're probably going to only run run up to you know, oh, one no. MG in a particular location. Got his squad pinned because he walked him a little bit too close to the machine gun there. He's going to have to retreat that now. He might be able to crawl out. It's pretty far. We are losing the and he did manage to decap the munitions point here. If they can decap this strat. No, he gave up. If he could decap that strat, he would have cut off access to that fuel right there. Even though, uh, oh, he lost access to the left completely, though. The uh, the far left point there. So, so the this income kind of here a, is a typical way to play this map. Would you say? Or? Oh, jeez, I've only played it once. Don't give me, don't make me an expert here. Uh, well, but you're mis you're Mister Former Custom Maps, you know. And, uh, <laughs> All right, expert. well. <laughs> it, it it looks like, you know, a good way to play it for me is, uh, I would think, is take the middle and one side and focus on holding both of those and harass your enemy's strat points that are near his base. And uh, the allied player seems to be trying to do that harassment, but he's not having a good time against those machine guns. There's now three machine guns on the field, which is what you really need to do against rifle spam because your Volks aren't going to be able to take the rifles all by themselves. Uh, so we've got machine guns to back that up. It's It's forcing the rifle squads to retreat and spend money and spend time running back onto the battlefield. So, what do we have for resource income? 32, 31 on my side. What do you have? 32, uh, 20. It's interesting that there's a Krieg Barracks going up. I would definitely not think that this map favors uh, Krieg Barracks. Plenty on using a lot of half tracks and moving your guys around the battlefield. Oh my god! Single grenade kill headshot on that machine gun in the big building. That wasn't quite expected there, but that was that was a bad blow to the axis there. He's got grenadiers out with Panzer Shreks. We are losing territory. Maybe with all the uh, cover in the middle, that's one of the things he's going for, is Panzer Shreks grenadiers to, uh, to defend against an early quad. I still think after seeing <laughs> BARs that you would uh, not go tier 2. Um, yeah, that's a bad thing there. That's true. Yeah. Especially on this map. So. We are losing ground. But it looks like he also lost his machine gun in the middle. There was, there was some pretty good flank allied player there. Uh, and we still have pretty much a deadlock. Nope, actually the Axis player has lost a lot of points. He's still losing points. The allied player. Allied player is losing lots of points. My bad. 446 to 493. So holding that right side has pretty much helped the uh, the axis a lot. But yeah, those bars do lots of damage. Not to mention grenades as well. Yeah, so, they, the, so he's pretty slow. Have a problem. Yeah, at this point, <coughs> seeing bars, you know that you can get to tier 3 and get a puma out way before he's going to be able to have a counter for it. Uh, except for sticky bombs. So I think that's one important tip. If you're playing against someone, you see them having grenades and uh, bars. You know there are a hundred fuel behind you. Um, you know, if assuming you get even amounts of fuel on the map, and the Axis player has had that plus ten on the right for a lot longer, and the Allied player has been cut off from that plus five on the left. So I would say that the Axis player had more fuel to begin with, and the Allied player spent a lot of fuel on the infantry upgrades. So it would be a good idea to go for. Uh, to go for tier three, real quick. Oh dear God! Wow! That grenade. That hurt a lot. That Volk squad's down to 0.2 percent health. <laughs> we have uh, sticky bombs being upgraded. It seems like the Axis player is a little bit more experienced than the Allied player. He's definitely doing good with combined arms and his MG um, 
usage has been pretty superb so far. Oh, here comes a grenade right on the machine gun. He's trying to move it. Not going to be in time. Ouch! That was a lot of damage. Almost got the whole thing. So right now it's pretty now. pretty polarized yeah. as far as map control. It's interesting. Unfortunately, he's got it's, the... Looks uh, like a fun, fun he, map. Uh, we've got idle action. unit on the right side here, unfortunately, for the allied player. He's got so many rifle squads, he can't keep track of all of them at this point. Oh, wow, another massive amount of grenade there. Almost destroyed that grenadier squad. Ouch. That would have been very bad for the Axis player. Those grenades are really paying off right now. So I think you're right, it was definitely a mistake. Oh, no, is that squad going to die? Rifle squad gets out just in time. No, he makes a kill! No. Long-range <laughs> snipe with the machine gun. I think you're right that the Axis player is paying for uh, going Tier 2. Because these infantry upgrades are devastating against the uh, the Axis infantry right now. And he could really use the Puma to, to fight off some of these uh, rushes. But again, we got this r idle squad. He could, be, he could be flanking this machine gun. That's a big mistake he's got right here. That could give him not only control of the right hand victory point here, kill this machine, get him the plus 10 on the right. I remember early <clears throat> in retail... Um popular strategy was massacre and get up, up real close to, uh, to, you know, in 2v2s, this will work really good because you could, you know, pinpoint your assault, undeploy, and then, you know, basically just annihilate whatever, whatever was there with, like, you know, four or five squads of grenadiers popping out at one time, and I'd love to see some of that in this game, some well-transported grenadiers. Um, yeah, because it's a big map, that's true. Yep. Oh, he's still not moved this this rifle squad. I wonder if he doesn't notice it's there completely. That's bad. That's that's pretty bad. You gotta keep track of that. But he has flanked around with another squad that he managed to bring around there. Oh no, a waste of a grenade. Axis have lost a unit. That's not good. Lost probably an engineer, a pioneer rather, over here on the left. Then again, the Allied player has had a, a engineer squad just sitting in this building on the left for most of the game, too. So he seems to be... There, he's moving it. Okay, he found the, he found the yeah, rifle squad on the right. So, Keeping sorry, that, that uh, engineer inside of that building. Yeah, he's had it game. there for pretty much the whole game. I mean, he could have been using it to flank once he finally killed that uh, machine gun in the building down here. I think it's a decent sacrifice, though. You really don't want a machine gun to get in there, especially because there's only really one avenue of approach um, for the most part. Well, there's Fair two enough. avenues, but then you all kind of have to... Both squads would link up in the center and uh, be really susceptible, so it's not necessarily that bad of a trade-off, especially considering riflemen cap faster than <laughs> every other... every other unit that... Uh, al every unit that allies can pop out in Tier 1. All right, so we do have the Axis, rather. Yeah. the uh, losing tickets again. It's a very close game, 435 to 440. And we have a Flammenwerfer here trying to fry the entirety of this rifle squad. It's got three members left. Here comes the machine gun burst. The flame drops the bar. Ouch. Another rifle squad lost for the allied player. That hurts. That hurts right there because reinforcing from one up to six is something like half the cost of building a brand new squad. So that's bad. Cost, but is yeah, it really a third? Much. I thought it was a little bit more than that when it comes to rifles. 20, 22 times 5 as opposed to 270. Yeah. Oh man, he's using uh, suppression fire to pin the machine gun. Drop a grenade, here it goes. Oh, that's really bad luck. But he managed to get it with the guys before he has to retreat. Very nice. So he's traded back and get, got that machine gun that's really been hurting him. Meanwhile, the Volks have been sitting there pinned. Not able to help much, and he got that squad out of there. So that was a pretty good trade-off, that battle. Even though the Flammenwerfer was doing its best, he managed to kill the machine gun with a grenade. Those, those are helping him out so far. So I think the grenades was a good upgrade. And the bars turned out to be a good upgrade, too, because we don't see any Tier 3 units yet. I'm surprised we didn't have a sticky bomb on that half-track, unless I missed it. Uh, no, we didn't. It's completely healed. So, yeah, that, that probably should have happened, too. But I don't kill it, so I don't know if it was worth throwing a sticky bomb when he could have killed the machine gun at that point. So it might have been a good choice there. Yeah, we have a um, tank depot going up. I'd love to see a croc right about. And just 
own everything. But is he going airborne then? Looks like we got a defensive doctrine for the Axis player. Do you know if he's going airborne? No, he hasn't chosen it yet. He hasn't yet. chosen it yet. Because I'd, I'd say airborne would be the best. Because if he doesn't go airborne, he's not going to have AT guns. And then he's in big trouble. So he's probably going to go airborne if he's gone straight to tank depot. I would probably agree with that. I mean, he should he should have know he should know at this point that you know with two level e and seeing tier two for so long, you know, 16 minutes into the game that I don't really think that another uh, devastating this, grenade. This player is going to be going tier um, tier three anytime soon. So definitely a crock right now wouldn't be a bad investment. His only issue is, is he only has plus 15 fuel income and he's sitting at 22 fuel right now so yeah that's so, gonna be a problem yeah that tank depot might i don't know yes, building that tank depot means the best thing he can put out would be a sherman or a croc in this case and that's 90 fuel so he def desperately needs to get this strap point so he has access to the plus 10 that he has over here now we're going to see a shift, the 391, axis on by about 50 victory points here. So we'll see if he can uh, make a comeback now. He's taken back the right-hand side. Looks like he's going to try and take back the left. Two Volks with, Volks with a bar. <laughs> I love it. Now what is he doing with his munitions? He used a lot of it to upgrade the Flemenwerfer, and he's upgrading a lot of, uh, a lot of Panzerschrecks. And LMGs, I've seen some LMG42s as well. That's the only reason we haven't seen MP40 Volks, I think, is because he's using it for a lot of his Grenadier upgrades. Oh, Battle he phase. He's, I, he's going to Tier 4 now. Well, I just noticed the reason why um, the player, both players chose to do what they did, not going Tier 3 for Axis and getting all those early upgrades for allies is that there's no plus 10 point on this map for fuel, so... There is. The far, far right point is plus 10, but that's the only one. The far right one? Yeah, far oh, right one. It's hard All to right. see on the, on the tactical map. It gets cut off. Okay, there's no... There's still... What the hell? All right. Yeah, there's still uh, no uh, plus 10, in my opinion. That's just yeah. way out of the way. Uh-oh, um, another sticky bomb. Are we going to say good night? Good night, Susan! That's a half track down. Half track down, half track down. We need reinforcements. So the Allied push on the left is really doing well. Even though these guys are being suppressed by the machine gun, he's going to have to retreat those guys. The rest have made it here. That Volk squad's gone. Ouch! He lost a half track and a Volk squad in that attack. That's the power of massed riflemen. He did not have a machine gun on the left. That's why the MG42, I think, is the most critical unit on the Axis side. Everything has to revolve around that. Because there's almost no way to stop a bunch of riflemen like that to just charge and all throw sticky bombs or all throw grenades at different targets. It's really difficult to kill things fast enough before they get off those devastating powers. So suppression is really your only choice. Cases. That's what I would suggest. And we're going to so see... We have LMG 42 yeah. grenadiers on the, see that. on the right. And then That's your other option, the, I guess. And then we have sandbags as well, so that's kind of funny. Well, people are now... <laughs> building sandbags there. Uh-oh. Oh, no! Hans is firing the, the Luger on the cloaked AT gun. That was a bad grenade. If you, if you ever see something starting to move, always try and lead it if you want to throw a grenade, but I don't even bother because sometimes you get it wrong and it's a waste of munitions. Oh, no. Does he notice? He does notice the machine gun. He gets around in time. The machine gun can't fire through it. So now he has full reign to pin those uh, troopers. How much munitions does he have? He has 29. Uh, not uh, quite enough, but it's going to be plenty to kill this last grenadier. We have a med kit on that. that last grenadier. Oh, wow, really? I yep, I see it. Oh. He's focusing... I don't know what he's... he's, he's he seems like he should have been able to kill that if he just rushed it real quick. No, oh, he's taking too much damage. He throws a grenade. Get out of there. Get out of there. He's going to lose it. But he did get it. Yeah, that was a decent trade-off for the most part. But uh, it's so close to his base that I'm not sure why he's really going. Oh, okay. Well, we have an M10. So if it can run over like five squads, <laughs> then we're, we're in good shape here. Yeah. Let's see. Do we... Uh... 
Panzer Command yet. We do have two AT guns, so right now the Axis player is in a much better position to counter the Allied player. Bridger, I think your computer needs a good dusting off. I disagree. Because, uh, you disagree? Here comes... Because I'm hearing that skipping again, which people complained about last week. Right, so. but if that's not on my side, then they can't hear it. So, shh. Here we go. Uh, we've got the M10 trying its darndest to kill infantry. I'm not sure why. Uh-oh. That's not good. That's not good. He didn't rotate. He needs to turn. No, don't back up. All right, there. Actually, wow, that was pretty good micro. We managed to get it right around that corner very smoothly. So, I will say that was not too bad. He managed to save it fairly well. He's going to shoot at the machine gun again. It's not going to do too much. See that? That's just why it has very low sl splash, is what I assume makes the M10 so weak against infantry with its main gun. Yeah, its AoE isn't <laughs> isn't anything good at all. Um, I don't know. Its uh, VPs are pretty much dead even at this point. Yeah. So, even though Axis seems to have a commanding lead as in far terms as of holding them, yeah. Resources, yeah, and, and resources. Held. I wonder if watching a replay screws up the income rate, because they should not have 54 munitions and the 29 we saw before. There's no OPs on the map, so there's no way that you can get that kind of a number, any non-zero, non-five number as far as I can tell, especially with no, uh, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, another grenade almost takes out a machine gun squad, but especially with no plus 16 on the map, there's no way to get a weird number like that. There's got to be some weird bug in the replay system, I think. Wouldn't surprise me. But anyway, lots, the squad in the center. lots of munitions. He, he really could afford to use For the Fatherland whenever he wants here. Yeah, I was about to say, I haven't, haven't seen not one For the Fatherland use this entire game. I guess, I think, I never use it either, and I think it's just because when I play defensive... It just doesn't occur to me that I that I should use it because for the longest time it was 75 munitions. Yeah, well, get in the habit. I know, I got to get in the habit. It's so so very awesome. The Axis player is still in a very good position here, holding the right-hand side. He's now got plus 36 fuel. He's probably, yes, he's building a Panzer Command and a Panzer IV. So, we don't have anything else coming out from the tank depot. What does it feel like? He's got a 74 fuel. He's probably waiting for a, a, a Sherman to pop out. And a Sherman and M10 could certainly take out a Panzer IV, assuming these uh, Panzer Shreks and AT guns don't come in to play for the Axis side. That's cool. You said Panzer IV, and it said it four times. That's cool. Yeah, skipping is awesome. All right, another grenade, another machine gun. Ouch. Not quite. Veteran seat gain. Veteran seat gain. Veteran tanks completed. So he has uh, level one veterancy on his tanks. Another example of why you should uh, rally point your tanks. This thing could be participating in the battle pretty soon. But he didn't have it rally pointed. Oh, another awful grenade. For the Axis player, he's got to be hating those things right now. And he lost the squad. Veterancy on the Rifleman. Very nice, but oh, they could use a triage center. These guys, I wish you, I bet you could zoom in and see them bleeding to death here. Here comes the Panzer IV. That's going to be uh, very painful. There it is. Pretty good splash damage there. It's an interesting turn of events. It looked like the Axis player had really solidified something there, and now allies are just overwhelming. Yeah, the uh, left side is where they're strong. Yeah, but I guess that's the price you pay for taking up to Tier 4, getting a Panzer Command, building a Panzer IV, and getting a level of veterancies to allow the allies who aren't really doing that a little bit uh, of uh, Is that a Sherman I see on the mini-map? No, no that's, uh, Pershing. Pershing, wow. That's going to change things. I didn't realize he went Armor Company. Yeah, he went Armor Company about uh, five minutes ago or so. Well then. So now he's in... Uh, he's got... Does he have Allied War Machine on the left? Or, no, that's that's Repair Vehicles on the left, right? 
Yep. Okay, so... Here, unfortunately, I think he's moving the, the Pershing a little bit too far forward. He doesn't know exactly where that AT gun is before, unless he killed it. I don't think he killed it. That Pershing take a lot of damage thus far, just from a Panzer IV and those uh, ATs. I haven't seen any, or, or the uh, Panzer Shreks. Oh no, there's an AT over there. That's what it was. It was Remember, hiding. guys, seven command point Pershings are completely overpowered and uncounterable. Sorry, I just had to throw that. <laughs> well, I don't think he used it very well. He didn't have anything. He he charged it way past his infantry. That's the key with any any tank, regardless of how heavy it is. You have to screen it with infantry. Just like uh, realistic type situations. Yeah, I know. I was just making making fun of that I, argument. Yeah, I know you were making funny, making the fun a. Now that Pershing's gonna take like years to 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 Repair. heal up. Yeah. We do have a crocodile on the field. So. Ooh, that too! Wow, nice combo. Pershing and M10 versus whatever tank, unless he lost the M10 and I missed something. No, I think he had it. No, I think he lost. Yeah, he lost it. Oh wow, so where is it? Where did he lose it? How the heck did we miss that? I have no idea. It's weird. Oh, there it is. It's in the middle, on the to the right of the victory point. He must have charged it. Yeah, there's an AT gun there. That's not good. Nope. You need to be but. able to support everything. Everything needs to be together, and you probably shouldn't be attacking multiple places because that something like that would happen. So and we have another Panzer IV just popped out of the uh, Panzer Command. I don't recall replays, no. at least in one v one. So just this could be a, a decent. Much. Hmm? Just toss a dang much. It could be a really good. Uh, <clears throat> really good choice on this particular map, although I think an earlier Croc or Sherman could have really, you know, changed this dynamic around, certainly. It's Tier 2, but it, it looks pretty viable um, to, from my perspective. What do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, it is... It depends on how much fuel you have. I mean, in this case, the Axis player had so much fuel compared to the Allied player that he could afford to take up to Tier 4 uh, and and not lose too much. But if he had been playing against a player who had the ability to produce half tracks and uh, or a Sherman or uh, you know an M8, then he might have been in trouble without the ability to 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 produce anything to counter it short of Panzer Shreks. I don't know. I just think that Tier Four is so expensive, you know, especially considering all the manpower required to get to it. The Allies have to spend, you know. 50 fuel and 50 manpower, and then 450 manpower for tier four. I don't know. It just it always seems so much more expensive than 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 the allied component to me. I don't know why. Maybe it's just a weird oh, subjective. Oh, because it thing. is. No, you're right. It is. It's. I think Cepha did the math, and it was something like to get every tier with allies. It's like 800, you know. With but with every tier and every building with axis, it's like 1500 or something like that. So, um, it is more expensive. But, um, oh, that's cool. We got a repair station. Sorry, I just had to <laughs> note that. But, uh, I don't know. I think it, you, there was always that skip. You know, you're not using your fuel early on because you're basically going to, you know, stay in tier two, which doesn't really require any fuel unless you can't, uh, the half tracks. And, uh, wow. then later on you'll, you'll go up to, uh, go did up to four. You, did you see those two grenadier squads with the LMGs just rip up that rifle squad that charged in? I mean, the tank got off like two shots, but the Grenadiers were what really killed it. Yeah, LMGs are, are pretty effective, especially if you have one or two of them, which uh, Gabe does. Ouch. Yeah, there, look at that. Double vet. You don't want to lose Double that vet, squad. Yeah. Come on. Oh, it's going to run right past a lot of other... Oh, that's uh, dead. Wow. That's a lot. We've already got the rocket barrage on the Axis side. They've got a lot of XP. And there's the croc. It's sitting there taking shots from an AT gun, though. He's got a... There you go. That's not too bad damage for... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Panzer IV! He's in trouble now! <laughs> Run! Hide behind the Pershing! <laughs> Two levels of veterancy on that, too. Yeah. So we do have the machine gunner on top. Uh, that's... <laughs> Panzer IV... Good anti-tank, well, decent anti-tank, but uh, with that gunner on top, its infantry killing capabilities is just through the roof. Yeah. 
it's certainly about as effective as a as a Sherman with uh, with the same machine gunner on top. Definitely. And it costs a little bit less fuel overall. A little bit less, about I think ten ten fuel less. This is one of those. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say this is one of those times where it seems like the best thing to do would be to do the unexpected, the right right hand side, and setting up a position there and forcing the enemy to come to you. You know what I mean? He's Put got down some mines to guard this VP, just make it so that you know he's going to lose it probably if you have to retreat and attack the right, but put some mines down here to make it so that he pays to try and take this VP back, and then just charge the right, and that might be what he's trying to do here. Because then at least you can fight on your terms, and he's going to have to come to you. So instead of you charging in to set up AT guns and machine, and, and you know, machine guns and bunkers, you know, he's going to have to move into your line of fire, not, by, not the other way around. There's mine sitting down by the Axis player. Looks like this one's probably very handily in favor of the... Uh... Oh, I think he... He's running his Pershing along the right, but I'm not sure what the... Is he going to base rush with the Pershing? I don't know. <laughs> he's got nothing else sneak. there to help cap. Sneak attack with the Pershing. Yeah. yeah. What the heck? Some kind of crazy physics thing on my side. I was just like... Woo, when it was moving. So, um, the other thing is, these are defensive. And I don't know if he can, he doesn't know that, I don't think. There's no way the, uh, the allied player can know that the Axis is defensive versus have they just, you know, not done anything with any doctrines. Because he hasn't really right. used anything but the passive abilities that are available. But he obviously must know that Pershing is coming because he has... The ability, the, what is it, the, uh, advanced early, warning. advanced warning, there we go, that's the one I was looking for, advanced warning, and, oh, he's just charging his croc in, he's finally got it past the, the AT guns, but he's not got much health to show for it, all he needs is one more Panzer Shrek, there it is, good night, so there's the Pershing, though, going after the Kriegs barracks, I can't believe he's not bringing back his, Panzer IVs, does he not realize this is happening? I think he's going to realize it real soon. Yeah, there goes the first one. Second Pershing on the field. My god, if these two Pershings take out his entire base. <laughs> he's got three pan P Panzer IVs, though, flying back to the base now. But he's going to get that Kriegs. Now would be the time to retreat. <laughs> No, now would be the time. He's this. Uh, d d d d uh, <laughs> the German player is floating 629 munitions. He's pretty confident. He's ready to go with this rocket barrage anytime he wants. Did he bring AT guns back down there too? No, the AT guns just looking the wrong way in the, in the middle. Oh, flanking very well with those Panzer IVs. The right one. They basically Second blocked Pershing's his path. There. Yep. Oh, it's going to come up. Oh, but look how much damage it's taken. Wow. It must have got yeah, shot three or four times by the AT. Yep. Yeah, he walked through uh, the AT gun. I think he saw it coming. And not to mention Panzer Shreks. I think that was an act of desperation. I don't think he actually had any hope that it would when, succeed. When all else fails, double base rush with the Pershings. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if he'd waited, his opponent didn't seem to notice. He could have done twice the damage if he had waited and done it with a second Pershing, too. Well, I would have targeted the Panzer Command first to hell with the Krieg Barracks. Yeah, here comes another Panzer IV. Those things are pretty crazy. When you get them at double veterancy in groups, they can really tear shit up. And first uh, register artillery in the upper right-hand corner. Oh, uh, yeah. Not as effective as... Uh, it usually is, but uh, did his job. Yeah, he could throw another one right now, too, as soon as it is possible. Looks like he got three of the members of that rifle squad. We have a Flak 88 in the center, and that repair station is uh, really <laughs> doing its job. Wow. Axis player is playing very well right now. Here come the Grenadiers. Good boat. 
Unfortunately, they're hiding in water. That's not good. He's still trying. <laughs> Let's give it to him. He's still trying. He's not a quitter. No, the Axis player did a very good job this game. He did very effective use of those grenadiers, despite having all the grenades. I think the al the allied player made the biggest mistake in uh, going M10 first. Definitely. Yeah, the M10 was just a poor choice. I mean, unless he thought he was going to run over stuff. Um, when you saw Tier 2, I don't know why he even chose that. AT guns are just about as effective against M10s as they are um, against motor pool units. So uh, it's, that was a, a bad, bad choice. Um, Probably be the last ditch, ditch effort from the Allied uh, player to try to roll through the center, maybe maybe do something. But uh, he's just lost too much map control and uh, kept on making bad assaults, um, losing squad after squad in the center. And uh, the Axis player's machine gun usage was, I think, pretty top notch this game. Yeah, very good machine gun micro for the most part. You think this map should be in one v one rotation? There's the one ladder. thing. One thing I really don't like. If you notice down on the southern side, on the left, and I think we pointed this out when we looked at these, the strat point that's just closest to the Axis player's base on the left hand side, basically completely cuts him off from the left of the map, assuming he doesn't have those middle points. However, comparatively in the north, that's not the case. The strat point. Taking that strat point down does not cut the northern player off because they're still connected with that plus 10. All you have to do is extend this strat point over to the edge of the map the same way it's extended over here, and it'll work. I don't yeah, really have any problems other mean. than that. Yeah, I see what you mean. Because the munitions point will uh, link to the fuel. Yeah, exactly. Whereas on the other part, yeah, the strat point links to everything. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder why, uh, why that was never changed. Oh, there's some register artillery. All we have left of what might have been there is a, is a browning and a couple of contorted corpses. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely like the interesting positioning of the fuel on the edges of the map and the strat points that control the fuel in the center of the map. Yeah, the map definitely plays out differently than uh, any other map in yeah. 1v1. I don't think you can it's compare it to Angaville or Simwa or, or Sturzdorf at all, or Bolomons. Yeah. It's a very different type, which is why I like it. i just like to see that strap point extended over to the left, we are losing and then I think it would be pretty pretty, pretty well done, and i like to see it in the ladder. I think it's a little bit too big to be in the ladder, frankly. I think uh, rifle spam will be really overwhelming if used properly. Um, although we saw great MG usage in this game, I, I I just don't know. Plus, we never even had a Jeep, so he didn't really know where the MGs were, and I think this is definitely a Jeep map. Oh, look, the tank is going to try and destroy everything, and it's caused to attack the Pershing. And we're going to see Zero, GG from Japan 101. He's down. Gabe Dog SGL is the winner here. 381 victory points left. He played a very good game. As we said, machine gun usage was excellent. Uh, the timing of teching the Tier 4 went very well. He, he lost a little bit of map control, but he had his Panzer IV pop back out right as he started to lose the map control. Um, Doctrine Choice, I think, uh, was was okay. I, I, don't, I don't think going Blitz and getting Stormtroopers would have helped him against Bars any more than, you know, going defensive and getting For the Fatherland would. I think he, he could have used For the Fatherland more. And I think the veterancy use was very good as well. Yeah, I don't think that he even really needed a Doctrine to win this game. So, um, I would have liked to see some early For the Fatherlands, especially when there was some suppression going on or more intense battles, especially you were telling me at one point he had like almost 700 munitions or something. Yeah, he still has uh, 700 munitions. He could have been dropping yeah. rocket barrages the last couple of... But he he obviously didn't need to, so... Not much munitions to sneak a Panzer IV into his base and you know you knew he had a tank depot so you could have just dropped it on the tank depot and that would have instantly taken it out really a rocket a few, barrage does that much I didn't think so that it did. On an oh yeah, yeah two of them take it out as oh, well wow. on an HQ but every other building would go down even a tank depot to one rocket barrage unless they changed something since last time I checked 
Um, we but, never tested uh, it so effective. Yeah, it's really effective. But, you know, 250 munitions for that much manpower and fuel, I, yep. I, don't, I don't really know if it's, if it's that great of a trade-off. It'd be situational, but definitely in this game, uh, I, uh, maybe mid-game it would have been okay, um, like when, when the M10 popped out or something, once he saw that, to just run in if he had the points at that point. But by the time Pershings were coming out, there was the tank depot was useless. Yeah. Um, I definitely think the Allies' tanks more effectively, although the yeah. base rush was made for an exciting replay. Um, he didn't, even when he base rushed, he targeted the least important building out of all of what was there, which was the... Uh, the Kriegs. Uh, the Kriegs, because at that point it really didn't matter. He had plenty um, of guy, Grenadier squads. Even if you lost the Kriegs, that wouldn't have been a big right. deal. Um, right, and the Panzer Command is obviously more expensive in yeah. general and takes longer to build, so uh, definitely think, take down the Panzer Command first. I think the Allied player did a good job in, in using his grenades and his abilities. He always had uh, going at the the right time and he managed to kill machine guns uh, a lot of machine guns and a lot of guys in general with those grenades and stuff so he did a good job with those but I think he tried to rely a little bit too heavily on him so most of the time when he threw a grenade he would you know kill some guys but he had taken heavy losses in the attempt he didn't do a very good job with flanking uh, he left a couple of his units idle a little bit too often like that one that was on the right you know in like the four or five minute mark and was sitting there for a good minute and a half two minutes that could have really helped him out. He could have been flanking the machine gun that was right over here, guarding the middle. He could have done a lot of damage to that. He could have been taking the victory point, taking the munitions, whatever. And uh, so, you know, there's just a little bit of sloppy micro by the allied player, but I still think he did a good job with the grenades. So, uh, there you go. Yeah, it was a good game. It was entertaining. Um, wasn't the most, quote-unquote, skillful replay, but, um, you know, I think it was, it was a well-played and definitely yeah, interesting much. to check out the new map. So here's a call out to everybody else. If you have some really good games on the new map, one of the new maps, not Rec Train, but any of the other two new maps, we'd like to see them. Send them in to Tales of at tsncentral.com, and we'll probably use them next month for our no for another uh, video replay review from our users or listeners or viewers or whatever you want to call it, viewer replay review. Uh, we hope to have a, a great game for you next week between uh, some top players. Hopefully we'll be logging on there and sending some people out on missions. Get us a great game. Send it in to talesof at tsncentral.com. T-A-L-E-S-O-F at tsncentral.com. Also check out the audio discussion show for this week. We talked about the StarCraft II release. We talked about uh, some more information on opposing fronts. Some information on the De DirectX 10 patch. We had a Q&A session where we talked about different ways uh, to start off the game, how to counter a we weapon support center. We also had a very interesting discussion for the for Forum Watch section about Stormtrooper uh, costs and are they too cheap for their effectiveness. So you definitely want to check out that show. That's show number 33. Going together with this one, number 33, Tales of Heroes. We are out. For Vittensby, I am Bridger. Thank you and good night. The Team Sportscast Network. This broadcast is copyrighted 2006 by the Team Sportscast Network. Any copying, reproduction, redistribution, modification, rebroadcasting of any kind or any manner is expressly prohibited without the written permission of the Team Sportscast Network, LLC.